this weekend. My son and I are out here in the Southern California desert doing a little shakedown run with the new vehicle setup because I have a big trip that I'm leaving for next week. So I just want to make sure everything works. But what we're going to do is just go explore and find some of the hidden treasures that you can find out here in the desert, like a prehistoric sloth that weighed like four tons way back when. Those things were so massive. All kinds of cool things you can find out here in the desert. We're going to do a little camping, a little exploring. Should be a great weekend. Stay tuned. We start this weekend adventure in Borrego Springs, which is a small desert town in Southern California surrounded by the Anza Borrego Desert State Park and is a great place to fuel up, grab a bite to eat, and use as a hub for exploring many of the desert treasures. In the nearby surrounding area of Borrego Springs, you will see many of these massive metal sculptures scattered across the bleak landscape. There are around 130 of these that have been inspired by the creatures that roamed this desert area over a million years ago. These sculptures were brought to life by artist Ricardo Brasita, and as you drive around, keep a close eye out because they are not in the most obvious of places. Some of them seem to just mostly be alive just wandering around the desert. There are a few favorites out here that are easy to drive up to, like the massive scorpion, and the grasshopper, the prehistoric sloth, and you can't miss the serpent that appears to be slithering under the road. If you've never been out here, it's worth a stop just for a bit before venturing out to explore more of Anza Borrego Park. Our next stop today is just up the road a few miles east along the S22 highway towards Fonts Point. This is an easy four mile sandy road that rewards you with some amazing scenery at the end, which we'll be stopping at for lunch here shortly. The Anza Borrego Desert is the perfect environment to do a shakedown run with all the new upgrades I've done to the power wagon and breaking in our brand new Patriot Campers X1N Code Red trailer. I'm super excited to be pulling a trailer again. The convenience, quality, and capabilities of the Patriot Campers is unmatched in my opinion. And this is a new special edition Code Red version. Just looks awesome. I'll be doing a full detailed walk around soon, but for this trip, we've got some wide open trails with some good washboard roads to sort out any gear rattles and there's plenty of camping locations around so we can set everything up and make sure we didn't forget anything, which we did. And I'll talk more about that when we get to camp later. So Fonts Point is just one of those great little stops that you can easily get to. It's a quick little jaunt just up the trail, nothing hard. We didn't even air down for this and you are rewarded with this beautiful view. I've been up here many times, but it's amazing. But this is Devin's first time and I think he said, oh wow, this is pretty awesome. He didn't know what to expect. So Devin, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm blown away. Yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, great spot, plus a good stop to have a little lunch. So we're gonna have a little lunch and then we're gonna keep on going. Who knows where we'll end up next. 
Font's Point is a beautiful spot overlooking the Borrego Badlands and is worth taking a little short detour for. This is a popular destination and you will often encounter plenty of other travelers out here on a weekend. The landscape with its jagged ridge lines that bend and twist below seem like the terrain from another planet and the views to the end of the horizon from up here seem to never end. If you can time it right, Getting up here at sunrise or in sunset will make it even that much more special. We love coming here. Now, time for some lunch. I can't complain when my son volunteers to take on lunch duty. A little pastrami with some provolone cheese and that chipotle mayo. Oh yeah, super tasty. As we enjoyed our lunch, many other folks began making their way here. This is a popular stop out here in the desert. The trail leading out is part of a small loop that takes you back to the original trail you traveled on to get here. And I encourage you to not be in a hurry. The scenery and the desert plant life is something to admire. And if you time it right, coming out here in the spring after a rainstorm will reward you with some famous desert flower blooms that are truly, truly awesome. I love coming out here. There is so much to see when you venture off the beaten path just a little bit. Another four miles later, and we shifted back into two-wheel drive, hit the asphalt, and continued our journey east for about 14 miles, just so I could show Devon another popular area where you can have a little off-road fun if you choose. All right, so just a quick stop here at Truck Haven. And Truck Haven is not really an overlanders uh, affair. This is more of a off-roaders and side-by-sides and ATVs, just to come out here and put your vehicle through the test on obstacles like this. They've got rocks and tires and all kinds of cool stuff out here. It's always fun to come out here and see what people are doing. And if you're feeling up to it, you can hit a couple of these obstacles and have a good time. Now, I don't think we're gonna do that today because we're running a little bit behind We've got to head south and then west and go find a spot to camp, but it was cool to come by here and just check this out. This is a cool little spot. The great thing about Truck Haven is that it has a variety of obstacles from easy to difficult that allows you to play around and get a feel for how your vehicle performs in certain situations. The other great thing about this location is that if you find yourself stuck or, heaven forbid, you break something on your rig while you're in here playing around, you aren't so remote that you can't get help. There are usually plenty of folks around here that are willing to lend a helpful hand if needed. That's what I love about the off-road community. All right, so we've driven about an hour south and then back west from Truck Haven, and now we're getting ready to head back into the desert to some well-known spots that I know back here, uh, and we're gonna look for camp. That's the goal right this minute is we gotta find camp because it's Saturday, there's a lot of people out here. We've got a couple spots that I've got marked, so hopefully we'll be okay. But we are gonna air down. We've been running full tire pressure all day, but this heavy-duty truck on full tire pressure on washboard roads, well, let me just say, it'll loosen up a couple little fillings. So what I'm gonna do is air down, and then we're gonna head in, and I'm cooking dinner tonight. That's right, I'm cooking dinner, and Devin's totally excited. He's smiling over there, he's shaking his head, he's not sure. But we're gonna have a great time at camp tonight, and then tomorrow we'll get up in the morning, and we've still got some more spots that we're gonna take you guys to. So we're heading out here in a minute. Now I'm still figuring out where the sweet spot is for airing down these tires on this truck, but I can tell you that running the stock 60 PSI on the trail does not make for a comfortable ride, so anything less than that is a bonus. This is an area of the desert where I've been coming for many years, and I think I have taken for granted a few of the stops that I've visited so many times and I haven't shared with you guys. So after camp tomorrow, we'll stop at a couple more interesting spots that I think you'll enjoy. 
Okay, now we gotta go find a quiet camping location. And there's a lot of people out here, so I don't think it's gonna be that easy tonight. All right, so Devin and I have been driving around for what, maybe an hour and a half looking for a camp spot? Yeah, about. There's a lot of people out here today. Uh, the park actually just opened up yesterday and I think the masses are just everywhere. And so some of the normal campsites that we would go to out here in the desert have been taken, but we did find this nice secluded area right off the trail, nice and quiet. It's beautiful out here. The sun is just getting ready to set. It's just gorgeous. We're gonna cook up some dinner, get camp set up and just enjoy the evening. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get up, a little breakfast, a little coffee, and then we're gonna go explore just a little bit more. One thing I wanna address while we're here at camp is I've been getting a lot of questions over the last few months about this James Baroud space tent that I purchased right before our Baja trip. And I can say that this tent is probably my favorite one that I've owned. The quality, the ease of setup, the stowage, and the mattress. The mattress is really nice. All are superior to the other rooftop tents that I've owned in the past, but I'll do a more detailed review of this here in the future. Just for the record, I have absolutely no affiliation with James Brood. All right, we got camp all set up and boy, it is beautiful out here. It's, I expected it to be super cold and a little windy, but it is perfect. But I mentioned at the start of the video, this is a shakedown run. We're just trying to get things organized, figure out what we need and we don't need and uh, I kind of goofed. So the stove that comes with this came with this gas cable, hooks up no problem, but this is the wrong connection to get hooked up to the bottle. This is actually meant for the little Coleman bottles and I have the adapter and it's sitting on my workbench. So I pulled up the hot water heater and tried to see if I could get that gas hose to work on here. No luck, it's a different fitting. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be kind of cooking on an open flame tonight, sort of. So we have this little gas, uh, campfire and so I think what I'm gonna be doing is cooking dinner on this tonight. It's not ideal, but it'll work. Uh, but more importantly, I'll have to make coffee on this in the morning. And not only did I forget the hose adapter for the stove, but if I would have packed the proper hose for the Weber grill, we could have been cooking on this. Oh well, adapt and overcome. All right, now that we figured out how we're actually going to cook our dinner, let me show you what we're having for dinner. Although I still have one more thing I gotta overcome. Okay, uh, we don't do mountain meals, uh, but we don't go as extreme as Marco. Marco, brother, I miss you, and I can't wait to have another campfire uh, meal with you. Uh, but what we're having tonight should be pretty good. So we've got some fried rice, vegetable fried rice. That's pre-packaged, easy to heat up and make. And then I've got two salmon fillets. These are marinated in a orange ginger sauce and those should be pretty good. So this should be a great meal. Now, the one problem is, is I forgot the little handle that goes on the pan and the pot, but thankfully I have a little hot pad. So again, it's a shakedown run. We're winging it. We're figuring out what we need and what we don't need. I'm starving, dude. How about you? I'm so hungry. All right, let's cook this up and eat. All right, buddy, our improvised dinner. What's the verdict? Let's see. Mmm, that's really good. Not bad? No. Yeah. All right. That's pretty tasty. You didn't burn it too bad. <laughs> I think it tastes great. All right, dude. Yeah. Awesome. Dinner really was great, but what was even better was the campfire conversation and getting to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with my oldest son. 
Something we haven't done in a bit. It was nice. It was pretty chilly last night out here in the desert, so getting out of the sleeping bag wasn't something I was in a rush to do, but I really do enjoy getting up with the sun in the morning. And of course, I got the coffee brewing, and this actually worked out pretty good, and I had a nice hot cup of coffee waiting for Devin when he woke. Come on, that gets me some dad points, right? Well, good morning, everybody. We are having a beautiful, relaxing morning, and we just made some little scrambled eggs with some cheese. Now, for me personally, I actually like to cook the salsa in my scrambled eggs, but Devin doesn't like that, so I just put them on top for him. Got some strawberries, and of course, we've been having coffee all morning. I'm good and caffeinated already. It has been beautiful out here. It is so quiet. It was definitely a little chilly last night. I think Devin even threw on an extra blanket. Uh, it was cold last night, but what a beautiful morning. Now, we're gonna relax a little bit more, probably have another cup of coffee, because you know me. Uh, pack up, and then we're gonna take you to another cool spot that we love to go check out here in the desert. So we'll be out on the road here in a little bit. Having this sink on the trailer sure makes washing dishes a little more convenient at camp. Thanks, Devin, for running the camp scullery. Appreciate you, buddy. All right, one thing uh, about being out here in the Southern California desert is you've got all these massive, they're just big mud walls, sandstone, granite, all kinds of stuff in here. But after a rain, you will notice that sections of it will just collapse like this. And so we've been driving around today. There was actually rain this week and I'm seeing a lot of new collapsed structures like this. And we're talking about tons and tons of mud that have just come off the wall like this. It's something to really consider because if you're gonna come out here and camp, it's not really a good idea to camp next to one of these walls, especially after a rain, because you never know if something like this is just gonna slide off and that's the last thing you wanna have happen in the middle of the night. That is a lot of mud and dirt that fell off of that big cliff. All right, we're gonna keep on going. We got a cool spot to show you. All right, our next stop this weekend is the Wind Caves. Now, this is a place I've only been to a couple times. Normally, we just drive past it because it's a little bit of a steep climb to get up there, but Devin's never been, so we're gonna make the climb for him today. So we're gonna head up there. This is pretty cool though. It's definitely worth a stop if you've never been here. Okay, it's not a long hike, but it's a steep hike, but the reward's gonna be worth it. So we're almost to the top. The trail to the Wind Caves is only around a mile and a half round trip, but the climb is steep. Give yourself some time here because when you reach the caves, you're probably gonna wanna explore a little bit and soak in some of the views. These wind caves are sandstone formations that, like, well, their namesake, have been eroded over time by the wind, which is pretty crazy to think about. And all that wind erosion has kind of made this sandstone look like Swiss cheese. A cool little hidden treasure out here that most people don't know about and drive right on past. Okay, we've still got two more stops to go before we wrap up the day.
just a little bit down from the wind caves is a really cool spot that we always like to stop at because the geology here is just so interesting. Now this is part of the Fish Creek Trail, but this place is so cool. It looks like you could film an episode of some alien planet down here. It's really cool. And I've seen lots of college students come through here and they're studying all these geological formations and structures. It's really cool. And you know what? If you're coming down here, don't buzz through here. Take a moment, soak it all in because it's pretty neat. So I like this. All right, we got one more place we're gonna hit right after this. All right, we've come to the end of Fish Creek and we're about to hit pavement, so we're gonna air up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to a spot where I've seen pictures, Devin's seen pictures, but we've actually never been there. And we decided today, you know what, we're just gonna go finally see it. So we'll show you that in a little bit. But first, I need to air up. And right now I'm still using a portable air compressor. One thing I'm having trouble with on the power wagon is trying to figure out where to mount an air compressor. So for now, this is what I got. There's some options out there, but I don't love any of them. If anybody out there has an idea of how to mount a full dual ARB air compressor in a full-size vehicle, specifically a power wagon, I'm all ears. I would love to hear your suggestions. Our last leg of this weekend's adventure would take us about an hour east to a unique location that I have never taken the time to visit. And so since Devin and I had a few hours before we had to head home, we decided to make the drive and ended up at Salvation Mountain. This is a very interesting spot that lay in the middle of nowhere. Salvation Mountain is a man-made formation that took 28 years to make and is covered in cement and half a million gallons of latex paint. That's a lot of paint. There is a lot of history on how this formation came to be, but it's crazy to think that one man built this by himself. It's now a popular attraction that many who know its whereabouts like to visit. And if you're in the area, you can visit it and you can say you've been there. So our last stop on the trip was Salvation Mountain, which is just this unique little place out in the middle of nowhere. We're about an hour from where we were, and we've always talked about just coming here and check it out. And we're glad we finally did. It's pretty cool. And that Jeep Wagoneer, come on, that was pretty rad. This has been a great trip. My son and I have had an awesome weekend. It's been a good shakedown run, getting familiar with everything. Now we hit some of the cool spots that we love to go to out here in the desert, but there are others out there that you may also want to enjoy. We've been out to the Mud Cave, Sandstone Canyon. I'll leave some links down below. Plus there's all kinds of other places to come out here and see guys. I encourage you come out to the desert, come explore, have a great adventure. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.